Hi guys, can everybody hear me? <laughs> so, hi, nice to meet you all. I'm Erika Cellini, I'm one of the Wiki Movement Brazil's liaison, and this is my first international Wikimedia event, so I'm super excited to be here, and I hopefully will share something interesting for you all here on this line of talk. So, this work starts with uh, research that I was developing in Brazil on computational journalism and structured narratives with Wikidata. So, in journalism, they're using some natural language generation software for automating news, for, um, for news that have quite similar narrative structure. And we developed this con concept here of structured narratives, thinking about this practice on computational journalism, that is the development of verbal text, understandable by humans, automated from predetermined arrangements that process information from structured databases, which looks like that on the Wikimedia universe and on this tool that we developed. So when I'm talking about verbal texts understandable by humans, I'm talking about Wikipedia entries. When I'm talking about structured databases, of course, I'm talking about Wikidata here. And predetermined arrangements, I'm talking about Mbabel, that is this tool. So the Mbabel tool was inspired by a template by user Faros, right here in front of me, thank you very much. <laughs> and it was uh, developed with Eder Porto, that is right here too, the brilliant Eder Porto. <laughs> so we developed this tool that automatically generates Wikipedia entries based on information from Wikidata. And we actually do some uh, thematic templates and that are created on the Wikidata module, Wikidata IB module. And these templates are predetermined, generic, and editable templates for various articles teams. So we realized that uh, many Wikipedia entries had quite similar uh, structure narrative. So we could create a tool that automatically generates that for many Wikidata items. So until now, we have templates for museums, works of art, books, films, journals, earthquakes, libraries, archives, and Brazilian municipal and state elections, and growing, so everybody here is able to contribute and create new templates. Um, each narrative template includes an introduction, Wikidata info box, section suggestions for the users, uh, content tables or lists with listeria, depending on the case, references and categories, and of course the sentences that are created with the Wikidata information. I'm gonna show you in a sec an example of that. So it's an integration with, uh, uh, Wikipedia integration with Wikidata, so the more properties properly filled on Wikidata, the more text entries you get on your article stub. So that's very important to highlight here. Um, structuring this Wikidata can get more complex, as I'm gonna show you on the election projects that we've made. So I'm gonna let here this Wikidata Lab 14 for you to, after this lightning talk, because it's very brief, so you're able to study what we've been doing on structuring Wikidata for this purpose too. So we have this challenge to build a narrative template that is generic enough to cover different Wikidata items and to suppress the gender and the number uh, difficulties of languages and still sounding natural for the user because we don't want to sound something like doesn't click for the user to edit after that. So this is how the Emma Bell looks like uh, on the bottom form. So you just have to insert the IT number there and called the desired template, and then you have an article to edit and expand and everything. So more importantly, why we did it? Not because it's cool to develop <laughs> things with Wikidata, we, know, we all here know about it, but we are experimenting this integration from Wikidata to Wikipedia, and we want to focus on meaningful individual contributions so we've been working on education programs and we want the students to feel the value of their entries to, but not, oh, five minutes only, oh, Jesus, I'm gonna rush here. <laughs> and we want to automate tasks for users in general, and especially on tables and this kind of content that it's a bit of a rush to do. Um, 
And we're working on this concept of abstract Wikipedia. So Danny Vrandecic wrote an article super interesting about it, so I linked here too. And we also want to now support small language communities to fill the lack of content there. So this is an example of how we've been using this Mbabel tool for GLAM and education programs. And I showed you earlier the button farm of the Mbabel tool, but also we can make red links that aren't exactly empty. So you click on this red link and you automatically have this article draft on your user page to edit. And oh, I'm gonna briefly talk about it because I only have oof, <laughs> some minutes more. So uh, on the educational projects, uh, we've been doing this uh, with elections in Brazil for journalism students. So um, we have this experience with the Faculdade Casper Libre students, uh, with user Joalpi, he's not here right now, but you, you all know him, I think. And we realized that we have the data about Brazilian elections, but we don't have media cover on it. So we were lacking also Wikipedia entries on it. So how do we insert this meaningful information on Wikipedia that people really access? So uh, next year we're gonna have some election, people are gonna look for this kind of information on Wikipedia and they simply won't find it. So this tool was quite useful for this purpose. And the, the students were introduced not only to Wikipedia, but also to Wikidata. And actually they were introduced to Wikipedia with Wikidata, which is an experience super interesting and we had a lot of fun and it was quite challenging to organize all that. We can talk about it later too. <laughs> and they also added the background and the analysis sections on these elections articles because we don't want them to just simply automate the content there. We can do better. So this is the example I'm gonna show you. This is from a municipal election in Brazil. Two minutes, oh my. <laughs> so this example here was entirely created with the Mbabel tool. So you have here this introduction text. It really sounds natural for the reader. The Wikidata info box here. It's a masterpiece of Eder Porto right there. <laughs> <laughs> and we have here the tables with the election results for each position. And we also have these results here on the textual form too. So it really looks like an article that was made, that was handcrafted, right? And the references here were also uh, made with the Mbabel tool. And we use identifiers to build these references here and the categories too. So to wrap things up here, <laughs> it is still a work in progress and we have some challenges on outreach and technical to bring Mbabel to other language communities, especially the smaller ones. Uh, and how do we support those tools on low resource language communities too? Um, and yeah, finally, is it possible to create an Mbabel that overcomes language barriers? I think that's a question really interesting for the conference here, and I hopefully we can figure that out together. <laughs> so thank you very much, and, and look for the Mbabel poster downstairs if you like to have all this information wrapped up, okay? Thank you. <laughs>
individual scientists, most of them ecologists, collect their own data for their particular project. They describe it in their own way. They use their own properties, their own metadata characteristics. So this is an example of some collaborators of mine that collect data from a river. They have their own sensors, their own robots, and um, they study the water quality. Uh, I'm going to talk today about an effort that we did to crowdsource metadata for a community that works in paleoclimate. The article just came out, so it's in the slides if you're curious. But it's a pretty large community that worked together to, to integrate data more efficiently through crowdsourcing. So if you've heard of the hockey stick graphics for climate, uh, this is the community that does this. Um, this is a study for climate in the last 200 years. And it takes them literally many years to look at data from different parts of the globe. Each data set is collected by a different investigator. The data is very, very different. So it takes them a long time to put together these global studies of climate. And our goal is to make that more efficient. So I've done a lot of work over the years, going back to 2005. We used to call it knowledge collection from web volunteers or from netizens at that time. Uh, we had a system called Learner. It collected 700,000 common sense, common knowledge statements about the world. We did a lot of different techniques. Uh, the forms that we did to extract knowledge from volunteers really fit the knowledge models, the data models that, that we used, and the properties that we wanted to use. Um, I worked with Denny in a system called Shortipedia when he was uh, a postdoc at ISI, uh, looking at uh, keeping track of the provenance of the assertions. And we started to build on semantic media wiki software. So everything that I'm going to describe today builds on that software, but I think that now that we have Wikibase, we'll be starting to work more on Wikibase. So the Linked Earth uh, is the project where we work with paleoclimate scientists to crowdsource the metadata. And see in the title that we said controlled crowdsourcing. So we found a nice um, niche where we could uh, let them create new properties, but we had an editorial process for us. So I'll describe to you how it works. For them, if you're looking at a, a sample from lake sediments from 200 years ago, you use different properties to describe it than if you have coral sediments that you're looking at, or coral samples that you're looking at that you extract from the ocean. Uh, so Palmyra is a, is a coral atoll in the Pacific. Uh, so if you have coral, you, carry, you care about the species and the genus, but if you're just looking at lake uh, sand, you don't have that. So each type of sample has very different properties. So in linked earth, they're able to see in the map where the data sets are. They actually annotate their own data sets or the data sets of other researchers when they're using it. So they have a reason why they want certain properties to describe those data sets. Uh, whenever there are disagreements or whenever there are agreements, there's community discussions about them and there's also polls to decide on what properties to settle. So it's a nice ecosystem. I'll give you examples. You look at a particular data set. Um, in this case, is a, is a lake in Africa. So you have the category of the page. It can be a data set. It can be other things. Um, you can download the data set itself, and you have uh, kind of canonical properties that they have all agreed to have for data sets. And then under extra information, those are properties that the person describing this data set added on their own accord. So these can be new properties. We call them crowd properties rather than core properties. Um, and then when you're describing your data set, in this case is an ice core that you got from a, a glacier data set, and you're adding a data set you want to talk about measurements, um, you, you have an offering of all the existing properties that match what you're saying. So we do this search completion so that you can adopt that. So that promotes normalization. The core of the properties has been agreed by the community, so we're really extending that core. And that core is very important because it gives structure to all the extensions. Um, we engage the community through many different ways. We had one face-to-face -face to meeting at the beginning, and after about a year and a half, we do have a new uh, standard and a new way for them to continue to evolve that standard. Um, they have editors very much in the Wikipedia style of editorial boards. They have working groups for different types of data. They do polls with the community. And um, they have pretty nice engagement of the community at large, even if they've never visited our wiki. 
Um, the metadata evolves, so what we do is that people annotate their data sets, then the schema evolves, the properties evolve, and we have an entire infrastructure and mechanisms to re-annotate the data sets with the new uh, structure of the ontology and the new properties. So um, this is described in a paper, I won't go into the details, but I think that having that kind of capability in Wikibase would be uh, really interesting. Uh, we basically extended Semantic Media Wiki and Media Wiki to create our own infrastructure. I think a lot of this is now something that we find in Wikibase, but this is older than that. Um, and in general, we have many projects where we look at crowdsourcing, not just descriptions of data sets, but also descriptions of uh, hydrology models, descriptions of multi-step data analytic workflows, and many other things in uh, sciences. Uh, so we are also interested in including uh, in Wikidata additional things that are not just data sets or, or entities, but also other things that have to do with science. I think geosciences are more complex in this sense than, than biology, for example. That's it. Thank you. Do I have time for questions? Yes. Yeah. We have time for just a couple of short questions. Does the structure allow tabular data sets to be described? And can you talk a bit about that? Yes, so the properties of the data sets talk more about who collected them, what kind of data was collected, what kind of sample it was. And then there's a separate standard, which is called Lipid, that's complementary and mapped to the properties uh, that describes the format of the actual files and the actual structure of the data. So you're right that there's both how do I find data about X, but also now how do I use it? How do I know where the, the temperature that I'm looking for is, uh, is exactly in the file? This will be the last. To make it relevant. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, you have shown this process of how uh, users can suggest or like actually already put in properties and I didn't fully understand how this then works or what's the process behind it. Is, there, is this some kind of folksonomy approach, obviously, but, but how is it promoted into the core vocabulary if, if something is promoted? Yes, yes, it is. So what we do is we have a core ontology, and the initial one was actually very thoughtfully put together through a lot of discussion. Um, by very few people. And then the idea was the whole community can extend that or propose changes to that. So as they are describing data sets, they can add new properties and those become crowd properties. And every now and then, the editorial committee looks at all of those properties, the working groups look at all of those crowd properties and decide whether to incorporate them into the main ontology. So it could be because they're used for a lot of data set descriptions. It could be because they are uh, proposed by somebody and they're found to be really interesting or key or uncontroversial. Uh, so there's an entire editorial process to incorporate those new crowd properties or the foxonomy part of it, but they are really built around the core of the ontology. So the core ontology then grows with more crowd properties, and then people propose additional crowd properties again. So we've gone through a couple of these iterations of rolling out a new core, and then extending it, and then growing, you know, rolling out a new core, and then extending it. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. And now we have Adam Shore uh, with quote unquote something about Wikibase, according to the title. Uh, where's the internet? There it is. So I'm going to do a live demo, which is probably a bad idea, but I'm going to try and do it as the birthday present later. So I figure I might as well try it here. Uh, and I also have some notes on my phone because I have no slides. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so two years ago, I made these Wikibase Docker images that quite a few people have tried out. Um, and even before then, I was working on another project, which is kind of ready now. Um, and here it is. 
Um, it's a website that allows you to instantly create a Wikibase with a query service and quick statements uh, without needing to know about any of the technical details, without needing to manage any of them either. There's still lots of features to go and there's still some bugs, um, but here goes the demo. Let me get my emails up ready because I need them too. Da -da -da. Stopwatch. Okay. So it's as simple as, at the moment it's locked down behind, oh no, German keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> foiled, okay. Okay. Aha, uh, 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 uh -huh. okay. I'll, I'll remember that for later. <laughs> yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my god. Now it's American. <laughs> uh, all you have to do is create an account. Da, da, da. Click this button up here. Come up with a name for your wiki. Demo1. Demo1. Demo user. Agree to the terms which don't really exist yet. <laughs> <laughs> Click on this thing which isn't a link. And then you have your wiki base. <laughs> demo, oh God. Okay, I'm, le I'm learning lots about my demo later. One, six, one, four. S, G, uh, it's, it's random. Oh, come on. Oh no, it's because this is a capital U. Six, one, four, S, G, E, M, J. Is J, no, no, that's, oh yeah, okay. I really, I'm gonna have to look at the laptop that I'm doing this on later. Cool. Maybe I should have some things in my clipboard ready. Okay, so now I'm logged in. <laughs> oh. oh, keyboards. So you can go and create an item. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, maybe I should make a video. It might be easier. So, yeah, you can make items. You have quick statements here that have... Oh, it is all in German. <sighs> oh, log in, log in. It has OAuth set up ready. Da, 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 da. It's as easy as... I, I learned how to use quick statements yesterday. That's, that's what I know how to do. I can then go back to the wiki. We can go and see in recent changes that there are now two items, the one that I made and the one from quick statements. And you can go to quick... Stop, no. No. Oh, God. I'm glad I tried this out in advance. There you go, and the, the career service is updated. <laughs> and the idea of this is it'll allow people to try out Wikibases. Hopefully, it'll even be able to allow people to have their real Wikibases here. At the moment, you can create as many as you want, and they all just appear in this lovely list. As I said, there's lots of bugs, uh, but it's all super quick. Um, exactly how this is going to continue in the future, we don't know yet because I only finished writing this in the last few days. It's currently behind an invitation code, so if you want to come try it out, come and talk to me. Uh, and yeah, and if you have any other comments or thoughts, let me know. Oh, three minutes forty. That's that's not that bad. Thanks. <laughs>any questions uh, does the the quick statements and the query service are automatically updated 
Uh, yeah, so the, the idea is that there will be somebody, at the moment me, maintaining all of the horrible stuff that you don't have to behind the scenes. Um, so, so kind of think of it like github.com, but you don't have to know anything about git to use it. It just, it's all there. Yeah, or GitLab, or any, any of those big hosted solution things. Uh, it, a feature request. Yes. Um, is there <laughs> any, uh, is, in scope, would it be, do you have plans on making it so you can easily like import existing Wiki Yeah, so I, I have loads of plans. Like I want there to be a button where you can just import another whole wiki base and all of, yeah, that's, they're all in the feature list that's really long, yeah. I, I understand that it's, uh, it, you want to make it user friendly, but if I want to access to the machine itself, uh, can I do that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so again, like in the longer term future, there, there are possible, yeah, there's lo everything's possible, but at the moment, no. Um, is, um, two questions. Is uh, there a plan to have export too, so that you can export it to your own wiki base maybe at some point? Yes. Great, and is this a business? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> not, not currently. <laughs> yeah. um, what if I uh, start using it tomorrow? How long will the data be there? Um, so my plan was at the end of Wikidatacon, I was gonna delete all of the data, and then there is a Wikibase workshop on Sunday, and we will maybe be using this for the Wikibase workshop so that everyone can have their own Wikibase. Um, and then from that point, I probably won't be deleting the data, so it will all just stay there. Um, yeah. Question. All right, fine. I'll allow two more questions if you talk quickly. <laughs> All right, good people. Thank you, Adam. Thank, thank you for letting me test my demo. I mean, okay. I'm going to do it different. Thank you. And now we have Dennis Diefenbach presenting Q Answer. Hello, I'm Dennis Diefenbach. Uh, I would like to present Q Answer, which is a question answering system on top of Wikidata. So what we need are some questions, and uh, this is the interface of QAnswer, for example, where is uh, Wikidata con, I think it's written like this, 2019, and we get this uh, response, which is Berlin. So other questions, for example, when did Wikidata start it? It started the 30th October 2012, so birthday is approaching. Uh, it is six years old, so it will be their seventh birthday. Uh, who is developing Wikidata? The Wikimedia Foundation in Wikimedia Deutschland, so thank you very much to them. Um, something like uh, museums in Berlin. Uh, I don't know why this is now so... <laughs> Only one museum, now there are a few more. <clears throat> so when you ask something like this, uh, we allow the user to explore the information uh, with different aggregations. So for example, if there are many geo-coordinates attached to the entities, we will display a map. Uh, if there are many images attached to them, we will display the images. And uh, otherwise, there is a list where you can explore the different entities. Uh, you can ask something like, who is the mayor of Berlin? Uh, give me politicians born in Berlin, and things like this. So you can both ask keyword questions and full natural language questions. Uh, the whole thing, uh, the whole data is coming from Wikidata. Uh, so all entities that are ent uh, which are in Wikidata are queryable by the Wikidata ser uh, by, by this service. And uh, the data is really all from Wikidata in the sense there are some Wikipedia snippets, there are the images from Wikipedia, uh, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, but the rest uh, is all Wikidata data. Uh, we can do this in several languages. This is now in Chinese. I don't know what is written there, so do not ask me. Uh, we are currently supporting these uh, languages with more or less good quality because, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> how can this be useful for the Wikidata community? And I think there are different reasons. So first of all, uh, this thing helps you to generate Sparkle queries. And I know there are even some workshops about how to use Sparkle. It's not a language that everyone speaks. 
So <clears throat> if you ask something like a philosopher born before 1908 to figure out to construct a sparkle query like this could be tricky. So uh, in fact, when, we, when you ask a question, we generate many sparkle queries. And the first one is always the thing, the sparkle query where we think this is the good one. So if you ask your question and then you go on sparkle list, then there is this button uh, for the Wikidata query service and uh, you have the Sparkle query right there, and you will get the same result as you would get uh, in the in the interface. Um, another thing where it could be useful for is uh, for uh, finding missing contextual information. So, for example, if you ask for actors in the Lord of the Rings, uh, most of these entities will have associated an image, but not all of them. So here there is some uh, missing metadata that. Uh, could be added. So you could go to this entity, add an image, and then uh, see that, so see first that there is an image missing, and so on. Uh, another, another thing is that uh, you could find uh, schema issues. For example, if you ask books by Andrea Camilleri, which is a famous uh, Italian writer, you would currently get these three books. But he wrote many more, he wrote more than 50. And so the question is, uh, are they not in Wikidata, or is maybe my knowledge not correctly currently uh, like it is? And in this case, uh, I know there is another book from him, which is Un Mese con Montalbano. It has only an Italian label, so you can only search it in Italian. And if you go to this entity, you will say that here is written, it's a short story by Andrea Camilleri, and it's an instance of literary, liter literary work, but it's not an instance of book. So that's the reason why it doesn't appear. So this is a way to uh, track uh, where things are missing in Wikidata or modeled, not as you would expect. Uh, another reason is just to have fun. So uh, I imagine that many of you edit many Wikidata entities. So just search for the ones that you care most or you edited yourself. So in this case, who developed QAnswer? And uh, that's it. For any other question, go to qanswereu slash QA and... Uh, Hopefully we find an answer for you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just the dumbest person here, so. Um, so I, I want to know how, um, is this a kind of agnostic to Wikibase instance, or has it been tied to the exact like property numbers and things in, in Wikidata? Has it learned in some way or how, how was it set up? Uh, so there is training data. Uh, we rely on training data and this is also most of the cases why you will not get good results. But you are, we are training the system by the simple yes and no answer. So when you ask a question and we, answer, we ask always for feedback, yes or no, and this feedback is used by the machine learning algorithm. This is where machine learning comes into play. But uh, basically, we already had, we put up separate Wikibase instances and we can pl plug this in. In fact, the system is agnostic in the sense that it only wants RDF. And RDF you have in each Wikibase. There are some few configurations, but you can have this on top of any Wikibase. So um, you mentioned uh, it's being trained by yes, no answers. Are, so I, I guess this is assuming that the Wikidata instance is free of errors, or is it also? Uh, uh, they, they assume, you assume that the Wikidata instance is? I, I guess I'm asking, like, does this, are you distinguishing between source level errors or uh, misunderstanding the question versus un, a bad um, mapping, et cetera? Ah, so generally we assume that the data in Wikidata is true. So if you click no and the, and the data in Wikidata would be false, then uh, yeah, we would not catch this difference. But since the Wikidata quality is very good, so I rarely had this, if you go, this, this problem. <laughs> is, is this uh, uh, data available as a data set by any chance, sir? What is the, the, the yes, web service? The, the, um, the 
data set of is this answer correct versus the query versus the answer? Um, is that something you're publishing as part of this, or I, I didn't the, the the training data that you were you've been uh, using? If yeah. we publish the training data, we published some old training data, but uh, no, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. there is a question there. I don't know if we have still time. Maybe I just missed this, but is it running on a live, like the live query service, or is it running on some static dump you loaded, mm -hmm. or where is the data source for Wikidata? Yes. Uh, so uh, the problem is to apply this technology, you need a local dump because we do not rely only on the Sparkle endpoint; we rely, rely on special indexes. So we are currently loading the Wikidata dump. Uh, we are updating this every two weeks. Uh, we would like to do it more often. In fact, we would like to get the diffs for each day, for example, to put them in our index. But unfortunately, right now, the Wikidata dumps are released only once every, two, uh, once every week. So we cannot be faster than that. And we also need some time to re-index the data, so it takes one or two days. And uh, so we are always behind. Yeah. Any more? Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you all very much. And now last we have Eugene Avin Villar talking about Pananda. So good afternoon. My name is Eugene Avin Villar and I'm from the Philippines and I'll be talking about Pananda, a mobile app powered by Wikidata. So this is a follow-up to my lightning talk that I presented two years ago at WikiDataCon 2017, together with Carlo Mosquito. Um, you can download the slides, and there's a link to that presentation there. And I'll give you a bit of a background. So Wiki Society of the Philippines, formerly Wikimedia Philippines, had a series of projects related to Philippine heritage and history. So we have the usual um, photo contests, Wikipedia Takes Manila, Wiki Loves Monuments. And then our major project was Cultural Heritage Mapping Project back in 2014 to 2015. And that, uh, in that project, we trained volunteers to edit articles related to cultural heritage. And this is our biggest and most successful project that we had. 794 articles were created or improved, including 37 did you knows and four good articles. And more than 5,000 images were uploaded to Commons. As a result of that, we then launched the Encyclopedia of Philippine Heritage program in order to expand the scope and also include Wikidata in the scope. So here's a core team, myself, Carlo, and Roel. And our first pilot project was to document the country's historical markers in Wikidata, Wikidata in Commons, starting with those created by our, by our historical national agency, NHCP. For example, um, they installed a marker for our national hero here in Berlin. So this is the Wikidata page for that marker and a collection of photos of that marker in Commons. Unfortunately, the government agency does not keep a good database up to date or complete of their markers, so we have to painstakingly input these to Wikidata manually after careful research and confirmation. Here's a graph of um, the number of markers that we've added to Wikidata over time, over the past three years. And we've developed this historical markers map web app that lets users view these markers on a map so you can browse it as a list, view, uh, view it, view um, a good uh, visualization of the markers with information and inscriptions. All of this is uh, again, uh, powered by a live query from Wikidata, Wikidata Query Service. There's the link if you want to play around with it. And so we developed a mobile app for this one. So to better publicize our project, we de I developed the Pananda, which is the Tagalog for marker as an Android app that's published back in 20, uh, 2018. And I'll publi publish the iOS version sometime in the future, hopefully. I'd like to demo the, the app, but we have no time. So here are some of the uh, features of the app. So there's a map view and a list view with text search. So you can drill down if, uh, as needed. You can filter by region or by distance and whether you have marked these markers as either you've visited them or you'd like to bookmark them for future visits. And then you can use your GPS on your mobile phone to use for distance filtering. So for example, if I want um, markers that are near me, you can do that. 
And when you click on the details page, you can see the same thing, uh, photos from commons, uh, inscription of, of what marker, how to find the marker, its location and address, etc. And one thing that's uh, unique for this app is you can, again, uh, visit or put, uh, bookmark these. So on the map or on the list or on the details page, you can just tap on those buttons and say that you've visited them or you'd like to bookmark them for future visits. And my app has been uh, covered by the press and given recognition, so plenty of uh, local press articles. And recently, it was selected as one of the top five finalists for the Android Masters competition in the App for Social Good category. The final event will be next month, hopefully we'll win. Okay, so some behind the scenes. Um, how, did I, what, how did I develop this app? So Pranda is actually a hybrid app. It's not native. Basically, it's just a web app package, it's a mobile app using Apache Cordova. So that reduces development time because I don't have to learn a different language. I know JavaScript, HTML. It's cross-platform, allows code reuse from the historical markers map. And the app is also free and open source under the MIT license. So there's the GitHub repository over there. So the challenge is um, the app's data is not live. Because if you're querying the data live, it means you're pulling around half a megabyte of compressed JSON every time, which is not friendly for those on mobile data, incurs too much delay when starting the app, and if there are any errors in, the, uh, in Wikidata, that may result to poor user experience. So instead, what I do is the app is updated every few months with fresh data, compiled using a Perl script that queries Wikidata query service, and this script also does some data validation to highlight consistency or schema errors, so that allows fixes before updates in order to provide a good experience for the mobile user. And here's the, if you're tech-oriented, here's the more or less the technologies that I'm using. So a bunch of JavaScript libraries. Here's the Perl script that queries Wikidata, some Cordova plugins, and yeah, building it using Cordova and then publishing this app. And that's it. I hope you win. <laughs> All right, questions? Sorry if I missed this. Um, are you opening your code so that people can adapt your app and do it for other cities? Uh, yes, so uh, as I mentioned, the app is free and open source, so but um, where is there's it? the GitHub repo story. Ah. So you can download the slides, and there's a link um, in one of the previous slides to the repos repository. Oh, can you put it? Um, can you yeah, the bottom. Hi. Sorry, maybe I also missed this, but how do you check for schema errors? Um, so basically, we have a wiki project on Wikidata, so we sort of try to put there the guidelines on how to model these markers correctly, although it's not updated right now. Um, as far as I know, we're the only country that's currently modeling these on, in Wikidata. Um, there's also um, some, uh, an effort uh, to, for example, to, mod, to add stopper in um, in Wikidata, but I think that's a different thing altogether. Um, so I guess this may be part of this uh, wiki project you described, but um, for the consistency checks, have you considered um, uh, moving those into like complex schema constraints that then can be flagged on the wiki data side for editors to fix on there? Yeah. So um, that's, um, I'm actually interested in seeing if I can do, for example, shape expressions so that, yeah, we can yeah, do those things. At this point, we have quite a few minutes left. The speakers did very well, so if Eric is okay with it, I'm also going to allow some time for questions still about this presentation, but also about Imba Bell, if anyone wants to jump in with something there. Either presentation is fair game. Unless, like me, you're all just so dazzled that you just want to go to snacks and think about it. 
<laughs> I, I will always have questions about everything. Um, so for, I, I came in late for the MBAT tool, but I was looking through and I saw there's a number of templates, and I was wondering if there is a place to contribute to adding more templates for different types or different languages and the like. So for now, we're developing those narrative templates on Portuguese Wikipedia. Um, I can show you if you like it. Uh, we're inserting those templates on English Wikipedia too. It's not complicated to do, but yeah, we have to expand for other languages. French? French, German, yes. French and German already have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I also have a question about Mbabel, um, which is, is this really just templates? Is this based on the Lua scripting or is, is that all? Wow, okay. Yeah, so it's very deployable. Okay, cool. Just to catch that for the live stream, the answer was an emphatic nod of the head and a yes. <laughs> Super simple. <laughs> Super simple. Yeah, I would also like to ask, I'm sorry I haven't delved into Mbebel earlier, so, so I'm wondering, are you working also with the links, the red links, are you, are you adding some code there? For the, the lists? Yeah, for the, wherever the link comes from and the, the architecture, oh, well, maybe I will have to look into it. Yeah, I'll show you later. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> All right, you're all ready for snack break, I can tell. So let's wrap it up, but our kind speakers, I'm sure, will stick around if you have questions for them. Please join me in giving, first of all, we didn't give a round of applause yet, I can tell your answers. <laughs> <laughs>